Greetings, friend. This puzzle is a classic Sudoku from a phone app. Uh, on August 11th, 2019, Simon Anthony released a video called Improve It Sudoku, What to Do When You Get Stuck, where he solved this puzzle. It was sent to him by Kevin Yang. Kevin had gotten from a phone app, couldn't figure out how to solve it. This video went on to score over 669,000 views, making it one of the 10 most popular videos on Kraken the Cryptic. I'll put a link below to the original video. So, what does Simon say to do when you get stuck at Sudoku? Let's find out. And with that, it's solving time. Kevin, the person who sent him the puzzle, was not able to solve this puzzle using just Snyder notation. So he wanted to know how to proceed, either using full notation, guessing, or something else. Remember, Snyder notation is that technique where you mark in blocks where a particular candidate can be in only two possible cells. Simon proceeds with Snyder notation himself just to see how far he can get. First, he starts looking at the ones, and he notices there's only two places for a one in block three. Then he looks at the twos and sees there's only two places for a two because of the twos in row seven and eight, right here in uh, row nine in block eight. Then he looks again for ones and notices the ones are restricted right here to column nine in block nine, which eliminates this as a possibility for being a one. So this is a pointing pair. So he's able to solve for a one. And then he uses this one in row three and row one to make a couple more marks. Starts looking at the sixes and he sees two sixes here in rows or columns one and two. And in row eight, there's only one place left for a six down here in block seven. Then he looks at the sevens and notices since that six got placed there, there's only one place left for a seven. And starts marking the sevens going up into block four. Now he looks at the eights and he notices that uh, this eight comes down into block nine and there's only three places left for an eight and they're in column eight. So this, you know, eight has to be in here in column eight in block nine. So that means it eliminates any possibilities for an eight up here uh, in column eight in block three. And so you have this eight here in column nine and eight in a row two. So there's only one place left for an eight. And so Simon marks that. And then he cuts across eight, eight, one place left for an eight here. And he starts marking twos, noticing that the two comes up column two and row one. So now the twos create a point or a naked pair. And this is going to be very powerful because now you're eliminating other candidates from being in these two cells in block one. And so he capitalized on that by looking at this nine and going, oh, well, now the nines are restricted to the top of block one. And then he looks over at the sevens, seven, seven, two places left for a seven. And then he uh, notices that with the fours, he can actually solve for a four. Because what he does is he goes over here into uh, column seven. He's looking for now restricted areas. He says, well, in column seven, there's only three places, three numbers left. What do we have here? It's going to be a four, a six, or a nine. Well, a four goes here in, column, in row four, a four in row six. So that means only one place left for a four. And it's right there in row five. And now that creates a six, nine naked pair. And then Simon jumps back up here to the top and notices, oh yeah, I got this two here in row one. I got these twos, they act like a two in row two. So that means only one place left for a two in block three. That's right there. And then it helps him mark more twos as he starts coming down the column. You know, so he kind of goes like rows to columns, bands. That's really a normal way to kind of cross hatch and make your marks. And then he's able to solve for six. Uh, he comes, as he's got his eyes down here, he says, oh, the six comes up there. There's a six in row two. There's only one place left for a six. I can solve that. And then he creates, uh, he says, okay, sixes in rows one and two. Where are the sixes here in 
rows three, he makes those marks. And then he changes his focus to uh, ones. And he says, all right, well, this one's coming down. This one's coming over in row six and column four. So I can mark those as ones. And now these ones are pretty powerful. They're, you know, a pointing pairs. So that means it restricts the ones to these two spots in block eight. At this point, someone starts looking at the most restricted columns. You can't really see anything else for scenario notation. So he notices besides column seven, column six is pretty restricted. There's only four spots remaining. This is what you want to do first when you get stuck in Sudoku. Look for restrictions. And the restrictions or constraints, you know, there's the cells where there just can't be that many possible candidates. And usually that will yield uh, some promising logic where you can kind of move further in the puzzle. Any row, column, or block that has five or more solved cells should be your targets. And if you have two of them that interact, so like here and here, uh, row three and column six, you know, that's really going to be show a lot of restriction, and you want to focus on that. So what he notices is he starts here in row three, column six, and he says, what are the two spots that, you know, what can be here? And he's like, oh, it's just going to be a three and a four. And so this is the bi-value cell. I call them BVCs. Once you get the bi-value cells, now it unlocks uh, not just lock candidates and pairs, and, but you can start thinking about triples. You can start thinking about X wings, XY wings, uh, XYZ wings. It gets, it gets pretty powerful when you just have two cells because you're just limited on the restrictions. And then he comes down here to this next cell and goes, oh, that can be a three and a nine. But then he stops after putting these in and comes down here and says, whoa, these could be one, three, four, and nine. I don't want to fill all that in. That's, that's not restrictive enough for me to consider. And that's interesting because I would have kept on filling it in. Simon does it. And he saves himself a lot of time by doing that. And at this point, he says, aha. And he makes a really, a rather keen observation. He then focuses on this 7 and the 5 right here. And he knows the restrictions of where a 5 and 7 can go along row 6. So this is our first pause the video moment. Pause the video and see what cells 5 and 7 can be in row 6 while I give you a few seconds. Congratulations for those of you who spotted the naked pair in row six. You're very good at getting unstuck from this puzzle. For those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the naked pair is right here in row six, column two, and row six, column nine. What Simon notices is that a 5 and 7, because of this 5, 7 right here and this 5, 7 right here, there's only two spots where a 5, 7 can be. So you can immediately eliminate that 2. He marked that, and then he was able to solve for 2 right here. At this point, Simon looks for a bit on how to leverage this 5, 7 pair. It becomes very interesting to him. And then he spots an empty rectangle coming out of block 1. I've done a tutorial on empty rectangles, and I'll post a link here in the video. But I find it absolutely amazing he found this without marking the can at sevens around the grid but he just focused on these two by value cells in row six and he had faith they had to reveal something so i'll kind of run through a quick explanation here he he saw this empty this uh, naked pair and he looked up here and he said well you know it's five seven it's i got it's restricting quite a bit on block one and so where could the sevens possibly be here in block one well they can be here here and here, right? They can't be here because of this seven here in column one. And they can't be here because of the naked pair. Empty rectangle. The way to spot an empty rectangle is you're looking at a block. And if there's exactly one column and one row can eliminate all those candidates, you have the beginning of an empty rectangle. Now in this case, if you have a seven here, that would eliminate all these sevens and it'll only be one row, this row coming in here would eliminate that last seven. So what you know is if this is a seven, then this would have to be a seven. And there can be no other sevens along row one, including this space right here. But if this is not a seven, that has to be a seven because it's a naked pair. And then this still can't be a seven, right? Because the seven's either here or it's there. And the same thing, if this is a 7, uh, so this is how the empty rectangle works. 
what you look for is you'll look for one of these shapes where it's exactly one column, one row. You come down a column, and then you find five ISL. So there's only two sevens along this way. And that's how the magic works. Because if you eliminate the sevens here, you know, if this is a seven, it eliminates these sevens right here. And if you eliminate these sevens, then, then the row coming out of there has to contain a seven. So we can eliminate any seven from a cell that sees this row and this seven coming up this column. So there can never be a seven right here because you'd break the puzzle. If you put a seven here, then you'd have a seven there, and there'd be no place to put a seven in block one. So that's how the empty rectangle works. So Simon noticed that, and he says, hey, seven can't be right here. So a seven has to be either here or here. And I guarantee that this is where Kevin got stuck uh, and couldn't proceed any further. Because there's pretty hard logic uh, to get out of this if you don't spot this empty rectangle. And it's really, really critical point of the puzzle. Now you're wondering, well, what if he didn't spot the empty rectangle? What else could you find? Well, what you can find is that the threes are restricted right here in block, uh, block six to column eight. And, uh, and this is also you know, a one, three naked pair. So that's why it makes this a four, eight, nine. And then if you come over here, you see this three, nine. Well, if you focus on this cell right here and you looked at what can it be, you'll notice that there's a one, there's a two, no three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this would also be a three, nine. And so you'd have a three, nine naked pair right here. So this has a three, nine naked pair. And then if you focus on this cell, row five, column five, you would notice um, that you have a two, now the three nine, this can't be a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it can't be a nine because of a naked pair. This would have to be a one. And you could start solving from there. Um, that's not the path Simon chose, but I just kind of point that out. You know, what if you didn't find the empty rectangle? And so by putting these sevens here, Simon now restricted the sevens to row two here in block three, which means this can't be a seven, so this has to be a seven. And since this is a seven, this is a six. And then Simon was able to come down and go, okay, six in column five, column six, and row five. So this has to be a six. And this six, this is a nine. That's a nine, that's a six. And then this is a three, and this is a four. And he's able to take advantage of those by-value cells. And since this is a four, this would have to be a three. And since this is a three, and you have a three in row two, there's only one place left for a three in block two. Then Simon filled in the rest of block two with the five nine, and then looked up and noticed the restrictions in block one. You notice that a four can only be in two spots, seven is going to be in two spots, and nine is going to be in two spots. And so with this, Simon was able to solve for row one, column nine. So this is our second pause the video moment. So looking at what we just placed. See if you can solve the cell for row one, column nine, while well, I give you a few seconds. Congratulations if you spot it. You are an expert at using corner notation and pointing pairs. For those of you who just want to show, enjoy the show, it's a five. Because this is a four, seven, nine, naked triple, and you have the one, two, three, six, eight, there's only five is the only thing left. Okay, after spotting the five, Simon was able to solve the seven and the five from that naked pair that we had earlier. And then he looked more for uh, where the fives can be and notice we have a five here in rows five and six. So we can solve a five up here in column eight, row four, and then we can fill out the rest of block six with the three and then he saw these this threes here, and so he went right back to the Snyder notation. Uh, don't give up on that if you haven't solved the puzzle yet. Go right back to that notation and kind of look for your restrictions. And then he looked for the sevens and noticed, oh, oh I got uh, one seven up here. And then he filled in the rest of block three with that four. And then Simon peered down and looked for another strict and go, oh, there's, there's two and eights. The only thing left here in row six, I got an eight right here. So he was able to solve the eight and the two to 
finish off row six. And this two resolved this one, two naked pair up here in block one. So you did the one and the two. And then Simon came over and said, oh, I'm gonna fill out the restrictions here in column six, there's only nine missing. So I'm gonna put in those nines. You know, and this just kind of helps restrict the rest of block eight right there. Uh, goes back and looks at the twos and notices, oh, these twos in row five and six, there's only one place left for a two here in block five. So he marks that two and he marks the one, he finishes off block five. And instead of coming over here and getting the seven, he goes up and solves the five and the nine at the top. And then comes down to the bottom and notices, oh, I can solve down here that this is a five and a two. And then I'm gonna finish off the rest of column five with a four. And he makes some, he marked the rest of block eight with the three eight pair. And then he saw, oh, the fours are restricted. And so he marked those. And it was in this position with 21 cells remaining that Simon cracked the puzzle. It's all naked and hidden singles from here. And so for the rest of this, Simon went through pretty quick and you could follow along if you want or solve on your own, but it's all going to be hidden and naked singles. So what was the big takeaway tip here? If Snyder notation is not good enough to solve the puzzle, and there are some puzzles that are much harder and you'll need more than just Snyder notation because you're going to be using techniques like empty rectangles. Your next step is then is to pencil mark those cells that contain only two digits. Look for some patterns and restrictions from there. Most of the viewer responses uh, to this video are very thankful about his explanation of the empty rectangle and how great of a solver he was. What did you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Did you try this puzzle and get stuck? Where did you get stuck? But while you're at it, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to Smart Hobbies so you don't miss any new content. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm playing some YouTube collabs so I can offer some more value to you, the viewer. Don't be surprised you see some of your other favorite solvers and setters on this channel in the very near future. You just might see me on one of their channels. In the meantime, please check out these other videos from my channel. Thank you so much for watching.